Hey everybody. This video is going to go over the third sample narrative essay that you had to read for homework for week two assignment one. Um, so we're going to be talking about Back at the Ranch by Jay Allison. Um, I'm going to go through the rhetorical situation for you and then hit some of the highlights of this essay and explain why I choose it as one of the uh, samples to read. Um, so the topic for this one, for Back at the Ranch, you know, what is this story about? Well, it's a coming of age story. It's a coming of age moment when faced with choosing between right and wrong, or specifically in this case, faced with the choice between peace and violence, if you will. Um, you know, in experiencing this as a young person and how those coming of age moments affect your journey towards adulthood, right? Um, his angle, what makes his story unique or different or fresh? Because Lord have mercy, how many coming of age stories are out there in the world? Millions, right? So what does Jay Allison do that makes his in any way different from any other coming of age story that you might read? Um, you know, I think that it's his attention to detail, not necessarily sensory details every time. But his um, his laser focus on himself throughout the piece. And I don't mean that in like an arrogant way or like he's narcissistic. I mean his reflection, his the 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 way he's able to incorporate what was happening in that moment and reminding us of how it affected him later in life as well. Um, it is a super focused point and purpose. Um, what is that purpose? That purpose is is how those moments, those coming of age moments, those small moments can change us in big ways. How those small choices that might not seem important at the time can actually have big effects on our own personal journeys. Um, and that choosing wisely in those moments makes all the difference. Uh, you know, Sometimes these moments can pass by and you don't even realize and you never realize how significant they were. If you don't reflect back on them, you might miss how they affected you. Um, other times it takes some time, you know, maybe years before you look back at a memory and think, wow, that actually had a profound effect on me and totally changed how I viewed the world. I didn't realize it back then, but boy, do I realize it now. Um, every once in a while, you'll experience one of those moments where even in the moment, you get just how important it is and, and that you don't know necessarily how it's going to change you, but you know it's going to change you. Um, so this is one of those moments. That's his purpose is, is how those moments um, can affect us and how it's important to reflect upon them. Um, his audience is everyone. Everyone experiences coming of age moments. You know, some of us are lucky enough that we're not scarred or traumatized by those moments. Other people aren't so lucky. Those moments where you start crossing from childhood to adulthood, you know, during your adolescence, some of those moments can be super traumatic for people. Um, but I think anyone can relate to this story if you really get at what the heart of it is, if you, if you really understand what he's trying to accomplish with it. Um, his voice and tone are definitely more formal um, and serious than what we read with Brian Eden's two essays. Uh, but that, that makes sense because, you know, Brian was trying to make us laugh, trying to take, you know, silly or awkward situations and um, show the humor in it. Uh, but Jay Allison is taking on a subject matter and a moment that um, carries a little more weight and is a little more profound. So it makes sense that his tone would be a little more formal and um, serious. Uh, so keep that in mind, <laughs> you know. When you're thinking about the rhetorical situation of your essay that you're going to write, that's why voice and tone matter. Because if Back at the Ranch was written with the kind of humor that Brian Eden wrote with, 
then we never really would get just how significant and life-changing this was for Jay Allison, right? So you want to make sure you do the same with your essay. Keep that rhetorical situation in mind because it will guide you in how to write about it, right? Um, the opening of this essay, I love this opening paragraph. Um, it's poetry to me. A young boy molts, tender skin falls off or gets scraped off and is replaced by something, by a tougher, more permanent crust. The transition happens in moments, in events, all of a sudden something is gone and something else is in its place. I made a change like that standing in the back of a pickup truck when I was 15. I think that's gorgeous. Um, first of all, and strange, it's really weird too. Uh, a young boy molts. That's weird. Who's, that's, boys don't molt. People don't molt. <laughs> Birds and snakes, they molt. And if you don't know what molting is, it's when birds shed their feathers and snakes shed their skin. But what's more important is why, all right? Why would he use that word? Why would he put that idea or that image in our heads of molting when clearly humans don't do that? Um, when you think about why animals molt, you know, for those that do, um, Birds and snakes, they molt, they shed their feathers and they shed their skin because they're growing, right? So when they grow, they have to shed those things so that they can be replaced with something that fits better, right? So now, once you realize what the story is all about, you come back to that opening and now that makes sense. And it's a really cool reference. It's a really cool um, visual. Um, he lets us know pretty quickly in just those three sentences what this story is about and why he's telling it, right? We know that it's about something that happened in the back of a pickup truck when he was 15. So we know that's the story we're about to hear. And we know why he wants to tell us this story, because whatever happened in the back of that pickup truck changed him. It made him grow. It took off tender skin and replaced it with something tougher. That's what happened to him in whatever the essay is telling us, whatever the story is. Um, so that's really cool. Um, his word choice is interesting even beyond the opening. Um, you know, he says in the second paragraph, as an apprentice counselor, I straddled the world of boys and men. Um, Again, he's taking this physical illusion, this physical image of straddling. What we straddle a fence, right? Or you, uh, you know, you you straddle. It's a physical act. Um, so straddling the worlds of boys and men, he's making us visualize, literally, like physically being in between childhood and adulthood, or adolescence and adulthood, right? One leg on one side the other leg on the other side. You're literally split down the middle at that point. Um, and that's how he feels in this story. Um, I love how after the hippie uh, and the girlfriend show up in the Corvette, because of course the narrator, he is all about it at first. Um, but when he realizes that the cowboys are not feeling it, he says, um, I adjusted a traitor to myself. Um, that's a those are some, that's some cool word choice too. Um, he, he's very good with the words. <laughs> um, but it helps add a little something special to the essay. So that's part of his angle too, is how he, man, how he uses words and takes these, um, unexpected images and references and incorporates them into his topic and purpose. Um, it's very unexpected in ways. Um, he does include some sensory detail you know, or some description along the way. Um, it is not overloaded with sensory details, though, but it doesn't have to be. Um, he gives us just enough. You know, he does give us some, you know, physical description of the hippie and girlfriend and the Corvette. 
uh, I love how he gets that little detail about Weenie walking out from the office, you know, Weenie's bow-legged stride, his big belt buckle coming first. That puts that image right in my head. I can totally imagine this man, you know, kind of waddling <laughs> um, from out of the office. Um, I love how he gets the description of the one cowboy Hondu, the one who took the knife out, and he um, talks about how he holds, like, his mouth always looks like he's um, holding a cigarette between his lips. I can I can picture that, too. Uh, I love how he gives a uh, little detail about Winnie's dog, you know, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, uh, an inside-out looking animal. That's a weird detail to give, but man, it puts uh, an awkward and really strange image in my head. So I think that's effective as well. Um, you know, when he talks about the Corvette taking off down the road, you know, and they're chasing it in the pickup truck, he's talking about the exhaust from the Corvette. He says the smoke from its exhaust settled around us like fog in the valley. What a great um, simile there. Um, great comparison uh, and a very effective visual. I can see that. Um, I can imagine that in my head. Um, so I know that not a lot of students, <laughs> I know a lot of students don't like this essay as much as they like some of the other sample essays that we read. But what I will say is this, even though it may not have been your favorite and it might not have totally captured your interest, there are some things about this essay that you should really pay attention to. Um, it captures a moment, first of all. This can be useful to you. This is not something that took place over weeks or months or years. This is one moment, right? How long do you think this lasted? Couldn't have been more than 10 minutes or so, right? This was a very short interaction, very short moment that he is sharing with us. Um, so if you are thinking of writing your essay on something like that, just a moment, not a series of events or not something that transpired over a longer period of time, use this as a guide for how to capture that moment and make it come alive and fill it with just liveliness so that even though it's a small chunk of time, it feels big to us, right? Um, the other thing that I hope you get from this is how crystal clear Jay Allison was with his purpose. Um, he tells us right from the beginning why this story was significant to him, right? It was a moment that changed him. Coming of age moment, going from adolescence into manhood, right? Um, and he stays true to that purpose throughout the entire essay. And he comes back to it in the end to remind us. He never loses sight. He never gets off track. He never forgets why he's telling us this story. And every single thing he includes in the story is helping drive home that purpose. So that is the reason why I have students read this essay still, even though over years of time, I, I know that it's not a favorite. Um, I just can't get rid of it because it is such a shining example of how to capture that moment and how to stay crystal clear um, in your focus. Um, so if you get nothing from this, at least maybe you can appreciate those two things from this essay. Um, if you have any questions about Back at the Ranch or any other comments that you'd like to share with me about it, feel free to do so. Um, otherwise, uh, we're finished going over the three essays that you read for week two assignment one. Um, there will be three more essays that you'll be reading um, for week three assignment two. Um, so in week four, you'll get my interpretation of those essays and uh, what I want you to get from them. But any questions about the first three for week uh, two assignment one, let me know. Um, otherwise, move on and read the next three sample essays.